you have said that enhanced interrogation techniques were not only effective, but they were not torture. Your critics say otherwise. Mm -hmm. How do you keep the argument fo focused on substance rather than rhetoric? Well, simply by presenting the facts. I mean, one of the, one of the things about this book is this is the first time that the facts of this program have been laid out uh, for, uh, for the American people. If you think about it, for, for six years the critics had the field to themselves because the program was highly classified. So they could, uh, the, the information that came out was one, uh, leaks uh, from people who wanted to paint the picture, who were opposed to the program and wanted to paint it in the worst possible light, and two, irresponsible charges from left-wing writers and commentators in the media who compared it to the Spanish Inquisition and Nazi Germany and the rest. And we couldn't respond because the answers were classified. If, somebody, if I explained how waterboarding really worked or how these enhanced interrogation techniques really worked, I wouldn't just be telling you, I'd be telling the enemy, which helps them to prepare to, to, to resist them. So this is the first time that the actual facts have been, have been presented, and I think the facts bear our position out. And so just the, best, the best way to do it is to present the facts. The second part of your book's subtitle is How Barack Obama is Inviting the Next Attack. What do you mean by that, and how can he correct this? The CIA interrogation program is the, is the most important tool uh, that we had in the War on Terror. Uh, the most effective uh, tool that we had in the war on terror, and it stopped a series of terrorist attacks. By questioning these terrorists effectively, uh, we stopped attacks that were uh, planned for our, our consulate in Karachi. They were planning to blow up our Marine camp in Djibouti. They were planning to repeat 9-11 in Europe by flying airplanes into Heathrow Airport in downtown London. They were planning to fly an airplane into the Library Tower in Los Angeles and other, other planned attacks that were foiled as a result of this program. Um, if you think about it, uh, after 9-11, we went in the Bush administration 2,688 days without another terrorist attack. So only two possibilities as to why that is the case. Either uh, the terrorists lost interest in attacking our country, or we found out what their plans were and stopped them. And it's clearly the latter is the case. This is the tool, the essential tool that helped us stop that. So to, to, uh, to have eliminated it uh, puts our country at grave, grave risk. You know, you hear from a lot of people uh, that Barack Obama is essentially ki continuing the po counterterrorism policy of the Bush administration. Well, he's not continuing this. Uh, the analogy I would give is if, if uh, during World War II, Neville Chamberlain had come in and taken, over, taken power from Winston Churchill, and he continued all of his policies except the end of the Ultra program, that was the one which had broken the German codes, and released the documents to the enemy so that they could see how to get around, uh, get around it. He could, it would be true that he was continuing a lot of policies, but he was still going to do the Normandy invasion and still going to do all these different, uh, the, uh, still going to fight the Nazis. Uh, but we gave up this most important tool that allowed us to, uh, to, uh, to win the war. Uh, he wouldn't be continuing all the policy of the administration. This is very, very dangerous, losing this capability. And following the failed Christmas Day attack and the announcements um, about Khalid Sheikh Mohammed's trial, there has been a renewed national conversation about how and where to try terrorists. What do you think we should do with people like Abdul Muttalib and KSM? Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to interrogate them for intelligence. You know, the, the, the fact that they put him into, it gave him a lawyer and started talking about where they're going to try Abdul Muttalib shows the lack of priorities. The, the, our first priority in the Bush administration was not in questioning them for evidence for a criminal trial. It was questioning them for intelligence to stop terrorist attacks. And so that's the first, uh, the first uh, priority. Where you try them later is, uh, is a debatable point, and there are some people you could try in the criminal justice system. There are some people who should be tried under military commissions. Clearly, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the mastermind of 9-11, uh, should be tried in a military commission. I mean, if you think about how dangerous this trial is, this is a man who, you know, he was the, he was the operational commander of Al-Qaeda, and all of a sudden he's captured and he disappears off the international stage. He goes for several years into a CIA black site where he's interrogated and is not, not able to uh, come out and speak publicly. Then he goes to Guantanamo Bay where he's been out of the public limelight. Now all of a sudden, they're going to, and you're giving him a criminal trial, they're going to put him, give him a stage on which to speak, make a dramatic reemergence. And this is going to be one of the biggest shots in the arm of a jihadist movement you could possibly imagine. And he's going to use that trial to put America on, on trial, uh, to, to rally the jihadists to carry out new attacks, and to pr make himself into a martyr. Uh, he offered at his military commission in 2008, he offered his military commission to plead guilty and go straight to execution. We should accept his offer.